Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Side News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a quick video on the Eagles' crazy first round as they were able to trade for Titan star A.J. Brown, who had five touchdowns last year and 13 about yards per reception. Uh, he was a guy that was a very solid force run after the catch guy or there, as well as a guy that could get the yards per reception. Is he a true one compared to a guy that's just a perfect mix into a receiving core? That's something we'll get into in a minute. But let's first get into Jordan Davis. The Eagles were able to snag Davis at 13 after trading the 15th, 124th, 162, and 166 pick. Having all of these picks in this draft really gave Howie Roseman a lot to be able to use and expose in trades to be able to move up. And that's exactly what the Eagles were able to do for someone that's supposed to be one of the best um, is supposed to be one of the best run stoppers in the draft, for sure. Um, in addition to anchoring one of the most dominant defenses in college football history, obviously Davis is huge, too. He's 6'6", 341. Testing profile is one of the best and most absurd ever. Six-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle Fletcher Cox resigned with the Eagles. So I think having that and having him come back, having to keep Cox, even though he might not be the same guy he once was, you have to have those mentors around for new D tackles coming into the league as well, and that's exactly what Fletcher Cox can be. He might not be the same player he once was, but he can definitely be a great leader and potentially mentor for Jordan Davis as well. But from reading a lot of stuff after the draft, and I will admit this, I'm bigger on hockey and baseball prospects and know a lot more about them than football. But on reading all this stuff coming into falling asleep at like 4 in the morning and uh, doing this video right now, it seems like the Eagles do think they got their man, not just as a one of the best run-stopper potentials in the league, but just overall stoppers, where I know from reading about Davis in the draft, a lot of the talk was run-stop, run-stop, run-stop. He's a goat at that. Apparently, it seems like, which <clears throat> I think you should when the guy's freaking six, it has that profile. If you can just get him developing in the right direction at reading when they're going to do the like RPOs and when the quarterback's going to run, so he can stop that as well as he stops... The running play, the regular running plays, and then also when they're just going to step back there and pass so he can just plow through the O-line. I think that's going to make one of the potentially most dangerous guys in the NFL, but it's too early to say that. But it seems like the Eagles from their draft pick are definitely that excited, thinking they don't just have a great run stopper, they have a great stopper on the defense in general that's going to get sacks. And then if somebody does make the catch, especially over the middle, uh, if you have... Davis near there are one of those short middle routes. He's probably not somebody you want to get tackled by, excuse me, with a lot of the teams in the NFL running those kind of short, quick slant routes nowadays. But when it comes to A.J. Brown, uh, let's get into it as uh, A.J. Brown, the Eagles, uh, were able to trade up to get in this draft. And, that, and he gets paid uh, $57 million guaranteed. He was entering the final year of his rookie contract and scheduled to make uh, less than $4 million this season, but um, it was Philadelphia reached terms on Brown with a massive contract extension of four-year, $100 million, including $57 million guaranteed for A.J. Brown. So obviously that seemed to be contingent since he was coming into the final year on the trade, and the Titans, um, in exchange for the 18th pick and a third-rounder, gave us A.J. Brown. So it was contingent, I would think, in order to get, especially that first round of that, he had to re-sign with the Eagles. And A.J. Brown did re-sign with the Eagles, where um, right now A.J. Brown is 24 years of age only, so he has a lot of room to still grow. And into that number one wide receiver, I said I was going to hint at that, he's already a one-time pro bowler. If you look at his numbers right now, he already <clears throat> puts up number one, 1051, 1075. Granted, obviously certain what people would consider not true number ones do put up those numbers too, but he did that at 22, 23. I think this guy is going to be a number one receiver in this league. And then you also kind of just have a perfect pair with Devontae Smith and him that nobody needs to kind of truly be that goat dude that carries all the time because you have both of them. And I think that might mix as a perfect duo, kind of like d -Jack and Jeremy Macklin mixes as a duo and potentially even more talented because Macklin was a very good athletic receiver, but I don't think Macklin was Devontae Smith, where if you're saying A.J. Brown's the best in this scenario... I don't think Macklin was as good as Devontae, and then if you're flipping it, Macklin definitely was not as good as A.J. Brown. So I think this could potentially be a better duo than even that, but we'll have to see. He was very solid last year. He only played 13 of the games, but 869 yards, almost 14 actually, 
looking it up now, yards, uh, yard rate per catch, which was 13.8, so that's almost f uh, 14, and then five TDs. So A.J. Brown, I think he's someone that's going to mix in here very well with Devontae Smith. He's still very young, and obviously Jordan Davis was a perfect pick for the Eagles. It's nice to see them trade up, not just for offense all the time, and actually trade up, focus on defense, focus on a receiver that's going to be key to seeing what you truly have in Jalen I almost said Jalen Rose, but Jalen Hurts, because you can't truly see what you have in Jalen Hurts with just the current receiving core. Now that you add in a stud like A.J. Brown and have him for four years, you're going to build him around Devontae. Both are young receivers that are going to get to grow in your system. I think that's a perfect idea and a perfect thing to do. And then obviously Jordan Davis, no complaints there. Uh, one of the best defensive players in the draft. It's nice to actually the opposite place. Fantastic job by the Eagles to finally focus on defense. Now, I hope in day two, they tend to focus on linebacking because, again, I'm more on baseball, hockey, prospects, prize, but reading the um, rankings and paying attention to all that stuff, it seems like there's still some pretty good LBs left. So hopefully they do focus on that in day two. Well, this has been the latest Sports Ad News edition of our Philadelphia Eagles show as we do a Philadelphia Eagles day one draft recap and analysis. Very good job by the Eagles to get a defensive player and trade off from Jordan Davis, who might be one of the biggest forces uh, stopping the run for sure, but also stopping the pass eventually in this league, and then acquiring A.J. Brown to go along with Devontae Smith and others in our receiving core. And also for those that didn't know, Arcega Whiteside, who wasn't our receiving core, isn't any longer because they moved him to tight end. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been the latest video on the Philadelphia Eagles by Sports Fan News. Please subscribe down below. Above the easy use, which is to keep the channel growing to 2.30 or more by the end of April. Have a great, safe, pleasant day, everybody. Peace out and go birds.